All right, YouTube, I'd like to talk a little bit about my sort of feelings on the origin of man, the origin of human intelligence, things of that nature. It goes back into quite ancient religion. And it goes into scientific study in the modern age, too, because there's a mounting group of evidence that suggests that human beings were engineered by some sort of extraterrestrial life forms that ended up getting uh, labeled gods by the people that, you know, were privy to their contact. And this seems to be, and this is something that I've studied for a while, several years. And at first I was mostly agnostic or skeptical on the topic, because of course you hear, well, the aliens made human beings, and you're like, haha, that's a good one, and then you sort of gloss it over. But as you begin to study more of these ancient cultures, I know my, my studies in archaeology always were a little bit strange to me, and I've always been interested in these topics anyway, but you look at some of this content, and you can't help but feel that there's something more there that people either don't notice or don't want to admit is there with regards to these ancient beings that, according to these large number of cultures, um, played a role in human development. What that role is, uh, specifically, is not exactly clear, but there's a little bit of, of modern evidence as well that folds right into it that sort of informs what that interaction was. Of course, if you look at Sumerian lore, if you look at the Sumerian stories, and the Sumerians were one of the oldest groups that had any form of written record. Of course, they found their library, and it had many thousands of tablets and cylinders which were inscribed with these various uh, mythological or supposedly mythological events, uh, astronomy, stuff about their religion and their politics and their society, things of that nature. One thing that's strange about it, though, is they're quite clear and repeat many times the fact that these beings that they worshipped, they called them the Anunnaki, were literal physical beings. They referred to them in a deified sense, but to them, they were literal, physical entities that came down literally from the sky. They had the power of flight, they had amazing powers in general, but they were capable of physically interacting with the human beings, which they involved themselves with. They even had sex with human beings, according to this. That plays into the legend about the Nephilim, which you find in the Bible. And another interesting thing being the Sumerian lore, which was then absorbed by Babylon, which held the same area of territory later than the Sumerians existed. Of course, the Babylonians were the ones that supposedly held the Jews in captivity. They had absorbed all this Sumerian mythology, or whatever you would call it, and the Jews seemed to have taken that and formed most of the Old Testament based on that Sumerian mythology, that is, that they took the stories, they changed the meaning and the names, but it's essentially in a very similar form. The Epic of Gilgamesh has the flood story. Well, then it appears in, in Genesis. Um, the story of the Garden of Eden, only the Sumerians called him Adamu instead of Adam. Uh, the serpent was actually a god called Enki, and he was actually the good guy of that story, if you can believe that. And I've mentioned that before to people, and they don't seem to understand. The story of Genesis in the Bible is not an original story. It's taken from Sumerian lore. You have a large number of cultures all across the world telling similar stories. Not only the idea of, of, of a flood or some other disaster, that then mankind gets mostly wiped out except for small groups which are saved by their various beings. Uh, not only that, but you have the idea of these beings, these very literal physical beings, coming down from the sky. The Hopi legends talk about it. The Zoroastrians considered Ahura Mazda to be a physical being capable of flight. This was a real, it wasn't some spirit that, oh, you can see it if you go into a trance, or you can pray to it and maybe you'll hear something. This was a literal physical being, an entity, a, a living thing, an organic life form that simply had an incredible amount of power. Of course, 
if you were to take modern technology and you were to go back in time to the days of Rome or to the Middle, Middle Ages, they would consider you a god or a messenger of God. They would deify you. They would say you were some sort of angel or demon or one of these pagan gods according to what technology or ideas or language you brought back and they would worship you potentially or they would kill you thinking you were you know evil force but they would potentially worship you they would have deified you even more so if these ancient cultures which are scattered around the entire face of the earth were encountering things coming out of the sky in ships or hang gliders or whatever even if they only possess technology that we that we had in the early 1900s or something, they still would have seemed godlike. And I've pointed this out to people. If a culture, you've got to understand something. If another race of beings were to have emerged somewhere in this solar system or even within this general region of space just a few thousand years earlier than us, it would have been perfectly capable potentially of traveling to this world a very long time ago. Give it maybe, you know, 20,000 years. That's a blink of the eye in the scale of space-time. It's not very long. We may think of it as a long time. You've got to understand, human culture has only been around for a few tens of thousands of years. It's not really that old. It was only about 100,000 years ago that our mind was uh, presumably fully developed and capable of language. So it's, it's only a blink of an eye in time. Yet if a culture did exist and was developed just that small piece of time earlier than ours, of course it would have been capable of coming here uh, for whatever reason that happens to be. The Sumerians also explicitly state human beings were engineered from pre-existing life forms by these gods, these Anunnaki. That it's not clear whether they mean God in the spiritual sense so much as they're saying gods these are beings that are in, incapable of us doing anything about them they rule over us simply because they're so much smarter they've got all these cool things that they use uh, they're more advanced they are gods the earliest concept of a god wasn't the idea of a spirit up in the sky that nobody can see and maybe if it chooses you can hear it that's a relatively new concept and a concept that's not common to many cultures. Most ancient cultures, most of the pagans, considered their gods literal physical entities. They talked about a spiritual world beyond the grave, but to them it was a physical world. When you died, it was a physical sort of reanimated body that was going to the underworld or to Elysius or whatever. It was physical. The gods were physical. They were capable of being hurt by other gods, by even humans in some instances. They were capable of being captured. You could trick these gods if you were really smart. They had all sorts... They had one... In Greek mythology, they had one story. The gods commanded the people sacrifice to them, that the better portion of meat would be given to the gods. So what did these people do? They took all the good cuts of meat, covered them in bones, then put the fat in another pile, and the gods decided, well, we'd rather have the fat. So the humans got to keep all the good meat, and from then forth, all they had to do was sacrifice all sorts of fat and stuff to the gods. They tricked the gods. This was considered literally true. This was considered an actual event. The idea of Prometheus, which figures in with the Enki story. Enki was a rebel. He had a group of other Anunnaki with him. Again, physical beings simply possessed of great power. Physical living things that wanted mankind to be intelligent and free. He was a rebel fit. He very much liked the modern Satan. The other gods didn't like this and continually were thwarted by Enki. Prometheus is the same thing. Here's the other thing. Not only in these cultures scattered around the world do you have the idea of people coming down from the stars and giving them technology or fiddling with their brains or whatever, having sex with them, killing them, whatever they happen to do. You don't just have that. You also have these stories continuously, time after time, and culture after culture, when supposedly this was during a time when there was relatively little trade and certainly no intercontinental trade, yet groups all over the world have the same similar story 
of this rebel figure that frees mankind. Prometheus gives man fire, condemned by the rest of the gods. Enki gives mankind liberation from the sort of slave Garden of Eden where they're mining gold or, or it's not exactly completely clear what the ultimate purpose was. He's condemned. Uh, the serpent in the Garden of Eden based on Enki, again, condemned for giving mankind godlike abilities. You have this in multiple cultures. Set uh, in Egypt may be one of these figures. That's not entirely clear either. So you have all of these different cultures telling essentially the same story. Now the going theme is that one of these cultures made their mythology, the rest of them sort of adapted it. That's probably partially true. The other thing is if you go back logically to the beginning of this chain of stories, what's it actually based on? Well, these people weren't stupid. They were building enormous, they were building megalithic structures. They had language, they had medicine, they had written records, they had quite a bit of architectural prowess, they had military prowess, they had the ability to make fine goods, they had the ability to make clothes, they had the ability to raise things through agriculture, which, by the way, requires some semblance of societal order. It requires some working knowledge of science, the biological sciences. We are to perceive these people as otherwise exceptionally intelligent, but simply they couldn't possibly have been recording real events. It had to have been they were seeing birds and they thought that they were gods. Um, they took psychedelics and they hallucinated and made this mythology. So we're saying that these people overall were 99% completely rational, but when it comes to something that we don't want to believe, that part's not true. That that part's just metaphor or just a hallucination. But everything else was fine. You've got structures in the ancient world. You can't explain where the hell they came from. And of course, the Great Pyramid's a great example. You've got these huge stone blocks. They're not exactly sure how. Today, a modern crane could not lift most of the stones in the Great Pyramid. The only crane on Earth that could do that are the kind that are used by NASA for moving the space shuttles. Presumably, they didn't have that technology back then. So either our history is wrong, and they were using, you know, gas-fed cranes back, you know, 5,000 years ago, or you know, they had some other weird technology, or they simply could not have built these things. Gobleki Tepe, though, is the most compelling. It's been dated to 12,000 years ago. That's twice as old as the oldest pyramid. I believe in date, roughly twice as old. Mankind didn't even have agriculture back then. He had no presumable societal order. He didn't know how to do anything. He may have been domesticating you know, a few animals, but he didn't have the ability to raise grains or anything to feed them. He was at most a pastoralist. Uh, certainly didn't even have horticultural knowledge at that time, or so the record states. So either our timeline is way off, and mankind developed agriculture long before without any evidence that it was actually being used and thus had the capability to build such a structure or there's no fucking way to explain how it came to be. Hunter-gatherers don't really have the numbers and the order necessary to create a megalith. Uh, certainly not with stones that large. How was it created? They can't, they have no clue. They can't answer it. And this structure is not one structure, it's actually several, containing blocks that weigh about 40 tons. Uh, they're carved with animals that aren't even indigenous to that region. They appear, you know, hundreds or thousands of miles away. It just makes no sense. The human timeline, as it's been posited by archaeology and history, doesn't completely make sense. The idea is that man hasn't been smart for very long, that most of the things that we have today are fairly new. And that's quite possible. Where then did these structures come from? Because they obviously weren't built by people using simple stone tools. They had to have had <coughs> at least modest metalworking skills to get these fine edges to cut these stones in the first place. 
how did he even know about quarrying? How did he even have the thought to build something out of stone instead of making it out of wood, which would rot away? We're not quite sure. There's also some modern evidence that we've been tinkered with before by these creatures from, you know, some other planet. There's DNA studies are, are increasingly concerning to some of the mainstream because they're showing that, yes, our DNA, by the way, has content which seems to have been intelligently created. Now, of course, the Christians will say, well, that's because we were created by, you know, Jesus' father, Jehovah. I've already pointed out the Jehovah myth comes from Elohim, which is a direct reference to the Sumerian pantheon in the plural form in Genesis, uh, that the Judeo-Christian philosophies and everything are basically built on Sumerian paganism anyway. I've already pointed that out, but we can go past that and we can say there's also the other possibility that physical beings manipulated our genetics. And there's also, roughly 50,000 years ago, for no apparent reason whatsoever, mankind just suddenly mutates and has all of these language capabilities and everything that we don't see in any of the hominid fossils. Um, where did these mutations come from? Because generally the way evolution works is slow progress over time. Unless you have a bottleneck effect uh, in just the right way, you generally have relatively slow change over time. That is that the, the things that control our larynx, our vocalization abilities, our minds, our ability to think critically, uh, should have taken many hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years, to fully evolve into their modern form. But instead they appear within a very, very short period of time without any real intermediate fossils. They just suddenly appear in the record for, you know, nobody knows quite why they appear at that time. And it doesn't quite make sense. Um, there's no reason for it. There's no reason why this particular uh, mutation would have been preserved. For instance, you think, well, there's this one mutant who has the ability to vocalize more. How does that increase their survivorship when you come to think that if they have it and the others don't, they're, they're not being given any advantage that the rest of the tribe doesn't have? And by the way, they can't think critically at the same level that modern man does, so uh, how is vocalization going to help them in the first place? They're just going to stick to grunting and moaning anyway because the rest of the tribe happens to be doing that. And yet all of this culture suddenly appears around this time. Uh, the Neanderthals were making wooden flutes and pipes <laughs> around this time period. And uh, it's kind of strange because you think, hmm, where did, the, where did this ability come from? We seem to be the only creature that has this ability. A chimpanzee can use a stick to draw termites out of a mound, but it can't manipulate that stick and make art out of it. Um, and there's increasing amounts of material that point to a possible extraterrestrial explanation to our development. Now, people say, well, that's crazy. ETs don't exist. Um, the ancient cultures, number one, seem to think that they did. And these people weren't as stupid as some people want to make them out to be. Of course, their cultures are the reason we have everything we have today. They already had the wheel and fire and uh, language and writing and all the trappings of modern society. Uh, the Romans were building, you know, automated mills for crushing grain, and that was several thousand years ago. Uh, we found uh, gear systems in mines in Greece from 2,500 years ago that were meant to drain water out of the mines. Uh, very sophisticated systems. These people had gas grenades and flamethrowers. They weren't that much less civilized than people were in the 1800s. Uh, if anything, they were more well off and had better medicine than the average person who had access to a sawbones during the Civil War. So human development, uh, it crashed around the Middle Ages because of the dark, you know, the plague and things like that. But you look back at these people and you wonder where did all these cultures and languages and things come from? I think there's a common grain to all of these religions, uh, more spiritualities. The, these pagans didn't consider these things religions so much as written history. They seem to have considered these things very real. The Norse, the Hopi Indians, all the natives, the Mayans, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the, the Vedic peoples, and later the Hindus, uh, the people of Japan, 
the Slavic people, all of these groups, certain African tribes, the Libyans, all of these groups have are commonly linked by these stories. And supposedly there was no intercontinental trade at the time. Supposedly humans migrated long before they developed culture. Or or trappings of what we would consider modern cult. They may have had, you know, primitive spiritualism, but they weren't supposed to have written languages or anything like that. Anything that they had was very vague oral history. Supposedly, according to history and archaeology, these people migrated tens of thousands of years ago, and then simultaneously, for some reason, they start building megaliths and using language and agriculture and talking about star people separate from one another. That doesn't make sense. Either we've got to assume there was some sort of intercontinental trade going on and these people were all communicating with each other and we don't have records of this fact, uh, or they're talking about the same event and then they migrated and then they remembered those stories, which makes no sense because oral history wouldn't lead, it would lead to more divergence perhaps, or they were independently visited by actual beings after they had migrated and these cultures arose as the result of different beings uh, taking up different cultures. The Sumerians have a fair, and Zoroastrians have a fairly simple explanation. There were multiple beings. Um, there were different groups that came to Earth and went to different peoples. And the, the Mayans would have their deity, which would be an advanced being, to help them out and uh, do whatever else they intended to do. The Sumerians had theirs, the Zoroastrians later had their own, the Egyptians, it's sort of like a patron deity of these cultures, which is the only thing, lo it actually makes more sense than any other proposition at explaining why these stories are so widespread across the world. Uh, again, star people, people from the sky, whatever it happens to be, the rebel god factor, you know, the Enkis and the Sets and the Satans and all of these things. A lot of them have sort of a messianic content as well. Jesus could be said to be rather similar to Enki. Uh, Enki liberates mankind, not from sin, but from essentially a physical slavery. Jesus essentially does the same thing if you really read the Bible, and there are New Age groups that consider Enki and Jesus the same being, essentially saying that the Anunnaki impregnated Mary, uh, which I think is a little bit of a stretch uh, on that one, but essentially saying Jesus was saving them from the slavery of organized religion. You look at the Bible and he clearly despises organized religion and is telling people to just get along and be nice to each other, uh, that seems to be one of the goals of Enki when he comes to Earth in the first place. You even have the same flood story, the, the adapted version of, of Gilgamesh that we find is more that the Elohim, the Anunnaki, the pantheon of uh, evil, wrathful, the main gods, uh, is trying to destroy mankind because they've rebelled. And Enki says no, and so he takes this one group of people, the Noahs, sort of people and puts them on a boat and keeps them safe. Uh, you have similar tales in other cultures. What seems to have happened is that there was some sort of worldwide problem and that these different patron deities, which the Sumerians suggest, are linked by membership in what's called the Brotherhood of the Serpent. The Brotherhood of the Serpent was founded by Enki and involved dozens of other gods. These gods diverged onto the people of the world and became their patrons in opposition to the, to the pantheon, the, the reference of Elohim, the regular Anunnaki pantheon. What seems to have happened is that the reason why these stories are similar and why we have things like Cappadocia in Turkey was built, by Ahura, built under the command of Ahura Mazda to save the people from disaster. Gilgamesh and the rest of his crew got saved because Enki told them that only they were worthy and the rest of humanity would be destroyed. Noah was put on a ship at the behest of God because God was going to destroy everything. Uh, all these other people, they went into the caves, they went on the boats, they went into the mountains, they fled from the plains and from the low-lying areas and went into these underground caverns or boats or whatever to escape the coming problems. And it happens almost in every culture. And they these cultures supposedly weren't talking to one another. So what seems to have happened is that there was some sort of thing that went on 
with this main group of gods, extraterrestrials, beings, whatever the hell you want to call them, hybrid humans, whatever you want to call them, and that these other groups of people were simply spared because they were communicating with these forces like Enki or Satan or whatever you want to call him or it, uh, and were told to flee. They were given the means to do so, either some sort of uh, people say, and there are differences, the neo-pagans, the sort of neo-Sumerians, the neo-Zoroastrians and stuff, they suggest that it was a, a spiritual force, that these beings are divine, that they have some sort of essence that goes beyond science and technology, it's an actual divine essence, and that this is how they were saved. The sort of ancient aliens people suggest, no, they were just ETs, these are advanced technologies, uh, anything spiritual is somehow related to metaphysics, it fits in with the science. You can't tell the difference between the two, they're basically suggesting the same things, just giving different rationales to why it happened. And there's no way to know necessarily for sure which, you know, group is more accurate, and it doesn't really matter because the stories are the same, the explanations of how it occurred are just different. There is a group called the Mound Building Civilization that flourished in the northern United, uh, what's now the United States and into southern Canada and down into northern Mexico quite some many thousands of years ago. Uh, I believe it was about 3000 BC to 1500 BC or something like that. And these people apparently and Modern archaeology, you have to take an archaeology class to even know they exist because you never get taught about this rather vast culture in high school because it's not Rome or Greece or Egypt, so it doesn't matter. They were building these enormous dirt and stone mounds all over the United States. It's been suggested there are tens of thousands of them, some of which may not have even been discovered yet. They might have been, you know, flooded over and filled with sediment or something in which there are these mass burials. Um, there have been reports, and these, by the way, I used to be a skeptic on the idea that everyone talks about giant skeletons, and there were giants in the world back then, and I was a skeptic because I was an atheist, and I was assuming that they were talking about the Nephilim, which I don't believe in the strictest sense existed. But there are actual giant skeletons, not only extant examples of them, but many reports of them being dug up, reinterred, or going into private collection and disappearing, etc. For some bizarre reason, these skeletons exhumed from the mound seem to be exceptionally tall and have double rows of teeth. They also, for some exceptional reason, seem to have had uh, copper using techniques when the natives at the time were not particularly well versed in metallurgy uh, that is the the Native Americans we have now um, and nobody can quite explain what this culture was they don't seem to have left many stone remnants they're just these giant pyramids and mounds of dirt uh, petroglyphs and things like that and if you tie in the Sumerian stories hello kitty if you tie in the Sumerian story of the Anunnaki interbreeding with humankind and the Anunnaki being reportedly uh, very tall and pale skinned with red or pale, or pale white hair, um, you can see why these giants, that some of them seem to have red or pale or white hair, uh, they happen to be seven, eight, nine feet tall and they're using copper tools in a period where supposedly everyone's using stone and wood, uh, it starts to make a little bit of strange sense. So what I'm saying is that there may, and we're not sure, there may be some kernel of truth, or these may be the entire truth to these stories. That is, that it seems more and more likely as mankind studies his own DNA and the archaeological record that yes, uh, by the way, some of these megaliths weren't actually made by humans. They may have been made by another race. And people say, well, the, uh, the Anunnaki, they're called human-like in appearance. Well, they must have just been a different group of people. Uh, the Sumerians are quite clear in that they are essentially another group of people. They're, what they're saying is that the Anunnaki engineered the what they call the ape people, the early the hominids, into Anunnaki-like creatures. They got taller, they got smarter, they got tool use and language use abilities. That seems to be the theme. 
and this seems to have spread to other cultures or been indigenous to them in the first place. The Hopi legends talk quite clearly about star people came out of the sky, we're from the sky too, we're going back there someday. Uh, this isn't, this has crossed over the realm of simple conspiracy into the realm of pseudoscience and now into the realm of real science. The Harvard published a study not that long ago saying that they found statistically significant content in our DNA. What that means is that it appears to have been deliberately engineered. Humans obviously five, six thousand years ago didn't engineer their own DNA, and I think I speak for most uh, people interested in the topic when I say that I'm not in the strictest sense a theist, so I don't believe that it was an actual deity that did this. That only leaves one possible conclusion. Uh, that purely and simply leaves, yes, there are other intelligent beings in the universe. And it's, it would be strange, again, I've spoken about this before, it would be mathematically inconsistent to suggest we're the only life in the universe. There are too many planets and solar systems out there, and now with new technology we've noticed that, by the way, a lot of these planets are, the, are similar in size to the Earth, it doesn't really make any sense to deny that there's life out there. People, at first, I think, eventually, probably within our lifetime, we'll see evidence of other life in this solar system. Uh, there is, There are claims that microbial life has been found on meteor fragments that have hit Earth. Um, some people chalk it up to contamination when they hit or something like that. So that's not, it's possible, but it's not definite. I believe we'll eventually find the remnants of life on Mars, uh, possibly even on the moon. I think it's likely, uh, I think it's very likely that that will happen. When we do, what will happen is people will say, oh, the universe must be teeming with life, but we're still special and there's no intelligent life out there. Or if there is, it's like, you know, uh, you know, sand fleas or insects or something like that. There can't be any higher mammals. Certainly there can't be any human-like intelligent creatures in the universe, which I believe is bogus. I believe there is life more intelligent than man out there. Uh, ancient records quite clearly depict the fact that that is true, that they have been here before. You can take it at its face value or you can take it with a grain of salt and say that these people were talking about you know, some other group of humans that they encountered, uh, which doesn't fit in with the stories that they tell about them, but you can assume that. You can assume that they're talking about some hallucinogenic-inspired trance vision. Um, but I personally believe, based on the evidence available, that humans were engineered by extraterrestrials. That's what I believe. Um, I think the evidence itself is too overwhelming to ignore, that there, is simply, there are simply too many questions that seemingly are paradoxes and can't be answered in our own history, which you have to, again, to overlook these ancient stories, you have to assume that these groups were largely dumb, that they didn't have their heads wrapped around reality, and yet at the same time, they demonstrated adequate knowledge of mathematical theorem. They, demonst they demonstrate things like pi and things of that nature. They demonstrate mathematical prowess, architectural prowess in, in the most amazing sense in some of these ruins, uh, an incredible, incredible interconnected economy system, especially in the old world, uh, agricultural capabilities, medicine, all of these things. So how is it that they were so smart on everything except recording history and that alone is the only aspect in which they glamorized it so severely that they were completely dumb. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it makes more sense to assume, rather than we were created by some logically inconsistent deity in the sky, a spirit of sorts, or that we just si uh, suddenly arose for no reason, and by the way, there are all of these inconsistencies in our own mind and DNA, it makes much more sense to suggest there simply is some other group out there that played a role in our development. That's what I personally believe. Peace out.